what's going on everybody this is Zerzio99 and uh, we're going to cover uh, some stuff in industry here I've gotten a request from a listener to a podcast that there's not a lot of people really covering industry in its modern incarnation and they're not really covering more advanced aspects of industry and I haven't done any really tutorials on anything in industry so I figured why the hell not just do it in just uh, chunks you know so that's what we're gonna do today now industry depending on what aspects of industry you do can get ridiculously skill point intensive. Uh, this character, as you can see, is my main, Urgent 99. He has 68.2 million SP. And he's got, as you can see, I got a little unallocated SP I could use if I wanted to. Now, this character can mine, fly a rock wall. He's just pretty good at boosting for mining bonuses, and he can build all kind of stuff. But there are a few main categories you'll stick to. If you're a miner, you will be putting a lot into, of course, spaceship command. Specifically, uh, the mining barge, the mining frigate, which this character doesn't know how to use because he predates the venture. You'll have the Which you have advanced spaceship command and spaceship command. These will improve your agility, so they're good for any ship. You'll have the mining frigate skill, which you'll get as part of the uh, industry career path to fly the venture. Then you upgrade to the mining barge which allows you to fly the retriever, the procurer, and the coveter. Then if you want to go into the Tech 2 versions, you train into the Exumers, which is the Skiff, the Mackinac, and the Hulk. If you want to fly an Orca, you train Industrial Command ships. If you want to fly the work wall, you have to train the capital ships and capital industrial ships. Now that train looks like a lot. It's 58 days. But I'm not currently mapped into perception and willpower. That's why the, the trains are longer. For those. But that just gets you into the ship. To do any meaningful things in them, you need to come up here to the resource processing tree and you'll need to train mining. As you can see it increases the yield. Always a good thing. Never not maximum yield. You'll need to train mining upgrades to at least a four so that you can use uh, harvesting upgrades. If you intend to mine ice, you'll need gas harvesting, or ice harvesting. If you intend to huff gas, either th uh, for use in drugs, or if you live in a wormhole, you'll need the gas harvesting skill. Which I don't have, because I don't huff gas. You'll have need astrogeology. It boosts your mining yield, but you need it to fly exhumers.
we have reprocessing, reprocessing efficiency, and then all the specific processing skills you see that clog up this, this list. These affect your refining rates, so you want to get these to 5. Because, for example, the reprocessing adds 3% per level, so that's 12%. You get another 2% for the reprocessing efficiency, that's another 10%. So it's plus 22% by having these two skills. And then you get another 10% for having the relevant asteroid skill trained to a 5 as well. And of course, if you really want to go full tilt, you get a refining skill hard wiring and throw that in there. In order to use... Uh, the work wall effectively you'll need this skill, industrial reconfiguration. This is what allows allows the work wall to enter siege mode and give out better bonuses and crush or this is the way it was done before you could put down uh, the compression arrays that you can use now. You had to have the work wall to be able to compress it. Now, for just straight industry, you can see there's quite a bit here. I don't have all the industry skills, but i got a fair amount. Core skill you'll need, industry. Basic operation of factories reduces speed by up to 20% when you train it to 5. You'll need to train this to 5. And you have advanced industry. Uh, this this skill used to be a production efficiency skill that actually made everything cost less material-wise. But when they changed the industry system in Cryus, they changed this skill to be a speed bonus to all manufacturing and research. So 15% faster building and research for anything just by virtue of having this skill. So it's a, still a good buy. And you have the skill mass production. Each skill increases the number of jobs you can carry. So you have one by virtue of having a pulse. Train this to five, you'll get five more slots. Then you train its big brother, advanced mass production, to at least four. Then you'll have ten building slots that you can use at any one time. So that comes in handy. Then we have these construction skills, like advanced small ship construction. This skill is required for the creation of Tech 2 small ships, frigates, and I believe also destroyers. It, it reduces the time it's needed. It's only needed to train to a 1, but in order to train the bigger stuff you need to have, as you can see, you need to have a 4 in the previous level. I just trained it all to 5, because at the time it was kind of all over the place when I trained it, so to build certain things it had to be a five. That has since changed with the Cryos expansion, so I still have quite a bit of SP invested that I technically don't need. Then we have, of course, capital ship construction. It allows you to build capital ships. And I'm actually mapped into those attributes, and it still takes 48 days. Gives you an idea how hard that skill is. There's also another skill above that one called Outpost Construction. If you're feeling frisky, but it's pretty much a waste of money for most people. You're not going to be building stations. Most, 
if you're building, if you're going to be building, considering building stations in the near future, you don't need to listen to me. <laughs> you already know way too much, or maybe think you do. So these skills are very much required for building, but they pair very well with the science tree. You can see I have a ton of SP in science. I'll go ahead and show all here. Now there is, of course, good skills to learn from the beginning. Uh, of course, would be the science skill. It produces blueprint copying. It also is a prerequisite for many of the advanced science skills, so you want to train that five. Then you'll want to train uh, research. This reduces the time needed for time efficiency research on a blueprint. Then you have metallurgy. This reduces the time needed for material efficiency research on a blueprint original. It's always a, it's a good thing to have when you're starting out. You can maximize and have efficient use of your time because in EVE that's the most valuable currency of all. It's time. And we get into uh, some other skills that are good to start off with. Laboratory operation, similar to mass production. And you want to get its big brother advanced laboratory operation. And then we have a whole slew of science skills. As you can see, there's uh, starship engineering, types of engineering. Most of these are used for Tech 2, and some of these are used for Tech 3 inventions in certain Tech 2 building. Of course we have the encryption methods skills. Now these will allow you to interpret the designs for blueprints. This is used in invention. Then you have uh, Starship Engineering. These are used in both Tech 2 and Tech 3 research and production. This skill, as you can see, skill and knowledge of astronautics and its use in the development of advanced technology. This skill has no practical application for capsuleers. And proficiency in its use conveys little more than bragging rights. This skill is an abject waste of money. Do not, under any circumstances, train this skill. It is an old skill that has not been removed from the game. They stopped selling the skill books, but they let people keep the skill books they had in their personal inventories. And as you can see, people are trying to sell them for tens of billions of risk. They are, in fact, worth nothing. It's kind of like... Uh, be kind of like me offering you the Brooklyn Bridge. The old saying, "I got a bridge to sell you." Yeah, just leave that, leave that alone. It's a waste of money and it's a waste of SP. Then you have the subsystem technology skills. These skills are used in conjunction with the Starship engineering skills to create the reverse in, to, to do the invention jobs for Tech 3 subsystems. Obviously the better you are at the skill, the more the higher your chances are of getting a successful invention. Then you have the slew of physics 
and engineering type skills. These skills combined with a decryption method are used to determine your success chance of inventing a blueprint of some kind. And to illustrate, I will go ahead and bring up the invention interface. I want to invent say I want to invent a hybrid charge just for the fun of it. Okay. Now I've selected an Iridium Medium Blueprint copy. You can see I can only choose to build it or invent it. I can't research it because it's not an original and I can't copy it because it's not an original. Now, I can do two things with a you can do a couple things here with this blueprint. Now I will attempt, it will take off one run and it will attempt to make a javelin medium blueprint. The blueprint as it stands now will have 10 runs. The material efficiency will be set at a 2. The time will be set at a 4. I can alter this by adding a decryptor. And as you can see you can highlight it and it will tell you what they do. It increases the probability multiplier, adds runs, possibly add or subtract material or time efficiency. Now some of these are very 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 valuable blueprint uh, decryptors. And you have to factor in the cost of what you're using to do it because like the data cores, these are consumed. You have to feed it a data core of these two types, one of each because it's a small, it's a medium and it's ammo. So not a lot of resource usage. The cost of this see here total cost of what we have to use 223,000 ISK we have a 46.5% chance as you can see there you see the base chance then you see my 36.7% because I have the relevant skills at a 4 giving us a 46.5% chance of having a successful blueprint. Process will take 10 hours and 46 minutes. And it will cost 129 ISK to do the job. And of course this would be uh, it would be orange if I could do it, but of course I'm lacking an item so I can't do it. But all these various skills, the physics, the encryption methods, they all come together to do this type of research work. Then down the bottom here you have sleeper encryption methods. This is used as the encryption method for doing Tech 3 invention. Now these skills of course have prerequisites which you have to meet first. See Science 5 then you'll have a an oddball core skill that you'll need. Like this one's Power Grid Management which used to be Engineering. So it'll be things like Mechanics, engineering, science, all those types of things will be uh, required. 
This is the most skillful and intensive part of doing Tech 2 and Tech 3 because as you can see it's 8 million skill points. And you see it have 68 million total. So it's a huge investment in time and is these some of these books are not cheap. Then you have these bottom, the sleeper, Takmal, Talokan, and Yang Jung technology. These books are essentially worthless. They're used to create the cosmos or storyline items. The components are very rare. The blueprint copies are even rarer. Uh, an example of a a cosmos type item is this uh, radical damage control. It's got the storyline tag. Those those kind of items are as you can see this uses Yang Jung components and you need the radical damage control blueprint. As you can see there the the box is grayed out because I don't have the skill. Personally these are not worth it. As you can see the item is 172.4 million isk. And the components are 31 million, but you got to get the BPCs for those, which means you have to be able to run Cosmos agents, and you have to try and get your pick of the loot for these, which is not always easy. But then again, why would you spend 100 See there, 165 million esque for damage control when you could spend a fraction of that, less than half a million esque, and get a damage control too that would actually be better, more effective. So it's, it's kind of a very niche thing. These types of items were present in the game before Tech 2 came out, and now they're basically a thing of the past. Now there's a lot of training here. Um, you can also add in, if you want to do, uh, for example, rigging, if you wanted to train to do uh, rig blueprints, you would need to train in at least one point in the rigging skills. I have jury rigging here to five because that's a requirement for super encryption methods. Normally you would only train this skill to three to unlock the other rigging skills. You can see. <clears throat> Hard learning for further study in the field of rigging. All these others are checked because they don't require rigging three. But let's see. Uh, no item to consider if you're going to be doing planetary interaction with your uh, industry characters. It's a good passive way to make income can come in very hand, much in handy when you're doing Tech 2 because the Tech 2 tends to require PI components as well. Train Planetology to 4 and train Advanced Planetology to 4. This uh, increases the strength of the heat map. I'll give you an example. Now 
Now I'm able to determine finer detail on my planet scanning. Just move the, as you can see I move the bar down and I'm able to really get in fine granular detail where the really good sexy spots are like this white right here or this one right here it's a, the better your uh, planetology skills the better you are at ferreting out where the resources are you have a bit more resolution on this you can see even I can't go all the way down but get pretty close so that's planetology and advanced planetology then you have remote sensing this allows you to scan other planets using the map like I was just doing now zero allows you to do it within the solar system then you can go out to nine light years if you train to five most people can just train within three and it's a pretty good uh, way to do it. Once you have a planet colonized, you'll be able to do remote orders from anywhere. It's just a matter of what you can see without uh, having your command center down there. Then you have command center upgrades. This allows you to build more stuff onto your command center. When it's deployed, it's at level 1. Every level in Command Center Upgrades allows it to be upgraded, which costs ISK, but increases the power grid and CPU available on the planet. And I'll probably, I believe I have a, still have my uh, PI tutorial in my playlists if you want to uh, go look at it. PI system has not changed significantly in well, a couple years now, so. Then we have interplanetary consolidation. Every point in this skill increases the number of planets you can have colonies on. As you can see, I'm maxed at five, so I can control up to six planets at one time. If you can keep, if you can keep on top of them, they're a good way to make money. Let's see. Of course, uh, good skills to have for cybernetics. If you're going to use implants, I recommend training this two of five eventually. If you wish to use uh, more advanced uh, augmentations, implants, As you can see I'm using basics, which are plus three. All attributes it only requires cybernetics level one. That's not a bad deal. As you can see, I also have a mining form and mine link on this clone. This one's pretty intense. This one's a cybernetics five, and then mining director five, which is a leadership skill. If you do intend to use the Orca or the Rockwall and provide command bonuses for your mining fleet. Uh, you will need to invest in some command skills. The first being leadership. You'll need to train this to a five. For each point you'll receive two members in your squad up to a maximum of ten. With this skill trained to five, you can sit in the squad leader position in most fleets, and you will pass down bonuses given to you from other people. And then once you train mining foreman and mining director, you will be able to, this provides a passive bonus to mining yield to anyone in your fleet, as long as you're the squad leader or a higher rank. Then you go into Mining Director, which allows you to use the command links on the Orca and the Wolf Wall. 
We want to train this to 5 to use the Tech 2 versions of those links and to unlock the Mining Foreman Mind Link, which provides further bonuses to the leadership bonuses you provide. Another good one to train is Warfare Link Specialist, which will add up to 50% more effectiveness to your mining bonuses. If you wish to expand farther and command a larger fleet, train the ability to be a wing commander, and you sit above your five, you can sit above up to five squad leaders and provide bonuses to multiple squads at one time from that position. And then if you're really insane, you bite the bullet, and once you train wing command to five, you inject and train the fleet command skill, which puts you at the top of the hierarchy and allows you to train multiple wings and provide them with bonuses. It's probably not a bad idea to also invest into Siege Warfare and Siege Warfare Specialist, as these are the shield bonus skills. And if you only use two mining if you use two mining links, you can add a siege warfare link to an orca. It just won't be as strong because it doesn't receive a whole bonus. But a little bit more resist using a shield harmonizing link could be the difference if you uh, if your mining fleet does get suicide games. That's always a good thing. But that should just about cover the skills you need for industry. Of course, I have additional competency skills. If you're going to tr if you're going to be a miner, I strongly recommend training the shields skill tree effect effectively. Of course, I recommend tactical shield manipulation. Shield upgrades, shield operation, shield management. I would also recommend shield compensation and the various flavors of shield compensation if you intend to use passive shield hardeners on your fits. And there's no reason to not tank your fits. The mining barges are shield tanking ships and you can still fit for yield using your low slots. So if uh, CPU considerations or if CPU or uh, power are a concern, be well versed in training the support skills for electronic systems. Or uh, electronics CPU management, power grid management. Another good skill is if you intend to overheat modules. For example, if you're using a shield boosted fit or active hardeners, would be thermodynamics, which allows you to overheat your modules for a time. Could be the uh, difference between losing a hulk and warping out in 10% structure. But that should do it for this episode covering skills. In the next episode I'll cover the basics of Tech One Industry and what you'll need to get started on the path of an industrialist. I'm Virgil99 and I'll see you next time.